You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. What do Mattel, Banana Republic, ButcherBox, and Glossier all have in common? They power their businesses with Shopify. Shopify is the most innovative and scaled commerce platform on the planet that also happens to have the best converting checkout on the planet. And that's no industry secret. That's Shopify. Learn more at shopify.com slash enterprise. Hey everybody, Dave here. Have you ever wondered where your personal information is lurking online? Like many of you, I was concerned about my data being sold by data brokers. So I decided to try Delete Me. I have to say, Delete Me is a game changer. Within days of signing up, they started removing my personal information from hundreds of data brokers. I finally have peace of mind knowing my data privacy is protected. Delete Me's team does all the work for you with detailed reports so you know exactly what's been done. Take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me. Now at a special discount for our listeners. Today, get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash N2K and use promo code N2K at checkout. The only way to get 20% off is to go to joindeleteme.com slash N2K and enter code N2K at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash N2K, code N2K. CrowdStrike's Adam Myers testifies before Congress. The State Department is set to provide nearly $35 million in foreign aid to strengthen global cybersecurity. Foreign adversaries claim ongoing access to presidential campaign documents. Researchers warn of critical vulnerabilities in fuel tank monitoring systems. Hackers claim a Chrome 2FA feature bypass takes less than 10 minutes. Exploiting ChatGPT's long-term memory. Politicians and staffers find personal data exposed on the dark web. A critical vulnerability in Avanti's virtual traffic manager is being actively exploited. On our Cert Byte segment, Chris Hare is joined by resident Microsoft SME George Monsalvacci to break down a question from N2K's CompTIA Project Plus practice test. And don't click the P. Diddy links. It's Wednesday, September 25th, 2024. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is your CyberWire Intel Briefing. Thanks for joining us here again today. It is great to have you with us. Yesterday, CrowdStrike VP Adam Myers testified before a U.S. congressional committee to address the July 19th incident where a faulty update to its Falcon sensor software disabled approximately 8.5 million Windows PCs, causing widespread blue screen of death errors. The problem arose from a mismatch between input parameters and the Falcon sensor's rules engine, which led to system failures until the issue was corrected. CrowdStrike apologized for the disruption, acknowledging that the incident impacted customers like Delta Airlines, which claims $500 million in losses due to flight cancellations. Myers detailed CrowdStrike's efforts to restore affected systems, including deploying automated remediation techniques and providing physical support to reboot machines. To prevent future incidents, CrowdStrike has implemented enhanced validation and testing processes, phased rollouts of updates, and added runtime safeguards. They've also hired third-party security vendors to review Falcon sensor code and quality control. Congress also questioned the necessity of granting kernel access to software like Falcon. Myers defended its importance, emphasizing that kernel-level visibility is essential for detecting threats and preventing tampering. 
He warned that restricting access could weaken cybersecurity solutions. CrowdStrike is one of the many vendors out there that uses uh, the Windows kernel architecture, which is an open kernel architecture. This is a decision that was made by Microsoft to enable the Microsoft operating system to support a vast array of different types of hardware and different systems. The kernel is responsible for the key area where you can ensure that you have performance, where you can have visibility into everything hop- happening on that operating system, where you can provide enforcement, in other words, threat prevention, um, and as well to uh, ensure anti-tampering, which is a key concern from a cybersecurity perspective. Anti-tampering is very uh, concerning because when a threat actor gains access to a system, they would seek to disable security tools. And in order to identify that that's happening, kernel visibility is required to see when that's, that's occurring. The kernel driver is a key component of every security product that I could think of, whether they uh, would say that they do most of their work in the kernel or not, uh, varies from vendor to vendor, but to try to secure the operating system without kernel access would be very difficult. CrowdStrike is facing multiple lawsuits as a result of the outage, including from Delta and its own shareholders. The U.S. State Department's Bureau of Cyberspace and Digital Policy is set to provide nearly $35 million in foreign aid to strengthen global cybersecurity, particularly among U.S. allies, according to exclusive reporting from The Record. Created in 2022, the Bureau aims to lead in international cyber norms, especially as nations like China exert influence. This funding boost, part of a broader strategy outlined in the Biden administration's national cyber strategy, will support rapid cyber incident response, counter spyware misuse, and enhance undersea cable and cloud security in the Pacific. The Bureau's flagship project, Falcon, enables rapid deployment of private sector tools to address cyber vulnerabilities for U.S. allies within 48 hours of a request. Additionally, a Pacific Islands undersea cable project, supported by Google and regional governments, will expand digital connectivity and cloud migration. As demand for cybersecurity assistance grows, the Bureau has shifted toward more strategic, flexible funding to improve global resilience against cyber threats and bolster U.S. cyber diplomacy. Hackers linked to Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps reportedly continue to target the Trump campaign. On September 18th, the group shared stolen campaign material with journalists, including a letter dated September 15th, suggesting ongoing access to campaign documents. The group, tracked as APT42, has previously targeted U.S. political figures, including officials connected to both the Trump and Biden campaigns. Google's threat analysis group confirmed blocking attempts to access personal emails of high-profile individuals but at least one political consultant's Gmail account was compromised. Meanwhile, the Federal Election Commission has expanded rules allowing federal campaign funds to cover physical and cybersecurity measures for candidates, their families, and staff. Approved unanimously on September 19th, the new rules enable funds to be used for cybersecurity tools, alarm systems, and other security upgrades. This move responds to increasing digital and physical threats, including recent cyber attacks on Donald Trump's and Kamala Harris's campaigns by foreign hackers. The FEC emphasized that spending must be legitimate, avoiding potential abuse of campaign funds for personal gain. Despite nearly a decade of warnings, critical vulnerabilities in automatic tank gauge systems used in gas stations and critical infrastructure like military bases and airports remain unaddressed. These systems monitor fuel tank parameters such as volume and temperature, but cybersecurity firm BitSight recently identified 10 vulnerabilities in six ATG systems from various vendors. Seven of the flaws are rated as critical, 
including authentication bypass and OS command execution issues, allowing full system access. BitSight warned that attackers could cause physical damage, such as fuel leaks or relay damage, and monitor or manipulate fuel levels. Thousands of vulnerable ATG devices remain exposed, particularly in the U.S. and Europe. Although some vendors have responded with patches, others have not, leaving these systems at risk. CISA has released advisories, but progress on addressing these vulnerabilities remains limited. Google introduced application-bound encryption in Chrome 127 for Windows to prevent cookie-stealing hackers from bypassing two-factor authentication using InfoStealer malware. This security feature ties encrypted data to app identity, making it harder for hackers to access sensitive information. However, multiple InfoStealer malware developers, including those behind Luma, Vidar, and Radamanthes, claim to have quickly bypassed this new protection. Reports from Bleeping Computer confirm that these malware updates can break Chrome's cookie encryption, effectively rendering 2FA protections useless. Once attackers steal session cookies, they can bypass authentication and gain full access to users' accounts and sensitive data. Security researcher Johan Reberger recently uncovered a vulnerability in ChatGPT's long-term memory feature that could let attackers store false information or malicious instructions. Initially, OpenAI dismissed it as a safety issue rather than a security concern, but Reberger pressed on, developing a proof-of-concept exploit that grabbed the attention of OpenAI engineers. ChatGPT's long-term memory is a feature that remembers user details to provide more personalized responses. Reberger discovered that attackers could exploit this memory by planting false details, like claiming a user was 102 years old or lived in the Matrix, and ChatGPT would incorporate this into future conversations. The exploit used indirect prompt injection, allowing malicious content such as a simple web link to trigger the attack. OpenAI has since issued a partial fix to prevent data exfiltration, but prompt injections can still manipulate memory. Users should regularly review their chat GPT memories and be alert for any suspicious changes during sessions to avoid unwanted memory tampering. An investigation by Constella Intelligence and Proton revealed that the email addresses and sensitive information of over 4,100 British MPs, EU Parliament members, French politicians, and U.S. political staffers were exposed on the dark web. The data includes names, email addresses, home addresses, social media accounts, and over 2,500 passwords, some in plain text. British MPs had the highest exposure, with 68% of their email addresses compromised. The leaks stemmed from breaches of third-party websites like LinkedIn and Dropbox, where politicians used their official emails. A critical vulnerability in Avanti's virtual traffic manager is being actively exploited, marking the third flaw Avanti customers have been warned about in two weeks. The vulnerability allows remote, unauthenticated attackers to create administrator accounts. Avanti released patches on August 12th and later acknowledged the existence of a proof-of-concept exploit. Although there have been no public reports of attacks, CISA added the flaw to its known exploited vulnerabilities catalog. Avanti has provided fixes, recommendations, and indicators of compromise for customers. Coming up after the break, N2K's Chris Hare and George Monsalvaci break down a question from our CompTIA Project Plus practice test. Stay with us. Calling all InfoSec professionals... Are you dreading the annual scramble to create engaging content for Cybersecurity Awareness Month this October? 
Auto Before has your back with their brand new 2024 resource kit, featuring their own award-winning streaming quality show, The Inside Man. This comprehensive kit is a goldmine of free resources designed to both captivate and educate your users. Your users will enjoy free access to the heart-pounding first season of The Inside Man. And for the first time, engage in The Inside Man New Recruits game, where your users become cyber analysts hunting down a malicious insider threat. But there's more. You get access to a resource user guide packed with ideas and messaging, a weekly planner to help you roll out your campaign effortlessly, plus enough supporting training modules and assets to fill a whole month. Cover critical topics including AI and deepfakes, mobile device security and incident response, all with the free kit. With No Before's kit, say goodbye to outdated, unengaging content. It's all there, ready to go. Learn more at knowbefore.com slash cybersecurity dash kit. When it comes to ensuring your company has top-notch security practices, things can get complicated fast. Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more, saving you time and money. With Vanta, you can streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrating your security posture with a customer-facing trust center. Over 7,000 global companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. Our listeners can claim a special offer of $1,000 off Vanta at vanta.com slash cyber. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash cyber for $1,000 off Vanta. On the latest edition of our Cert Byte segment... N2K's Chris Hare is joined by resident Microsoft subject matter expert George Monsalvacci. They're breaking down a question from N2K's CompTIA Project Plus practice test. Hi, everyone. It's Chris. I'm a content developer and project management specialist here at N2K Networks. I'm also your host for this week's edition of CertBite, where I share a practice question from our suite of industry-leading content, and a study tip to help you achieve the professional certifications you need to fast-track your career growth. Today's question targets CompTIA's Project Plus exam, which is exam code PK0005. This exam is targeted for candidates who have about one to two years of project management experience. This is not an actual test question, but an example of one that covers an objective for the fifth version of the exam, which came out in November of 2022. So today I've invited my teammate George back to talk more about project management in the CompTIA context. How you doing, Chris? Hello, George. George is our resident Microsoft expert, so I'm curious how he'll do with another PM question today. So, George, before we get into the question, I'm going to share a 10-second study bit for this exam. You have not taken the Project Plus exam yet. Is that right? That is correct. I've taken a lot of Microsoft exams, but never a Project Plus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, my 10-second study bit for the Project Plus exam is take the exam at an exam center to rule out any issues you may have taking the exam at home. I don't know about you, George, but I've heard horror stories about failed tests due to internet and other unexpected disruptions, and you only have 90 minutes for this exam. Yeah, I would agree with that. I've taken an exam at home. I had dogs barking. I had cats uh, <laughs> cats fighting with the dogs, and it was very hard to concentrate on the exam. So I agree. Okay. So now on to your question. Are you ready, George? Uh, let's give it a shot. All right. You'll do well, as always. So which of the following options accurately describes a typical SAFE team's recommended size range? Now, SAFE stands for Scaled Agile Framework. Are you familiar with this methodology, George? Uh, I'm familiar with Agile. Okay. A SAFE is a bit different. I'll explain that in a bit. So uh, let me give you your choices, and then I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Okay. 
The choices are A, there is no recommended size, B, 3 to 10, C, 9 to 20, D, multiples of two for pair programming, a term I'm sure you're familiar with. So George, to give you your hint, um, you said you're not that familiar with SAFE, so you are familiar with Agile and Scrum. And as you know, Scrum is basically a framework that's part of the Agile philosophy. So the hint is it's very similar to a typical Scrum team size as it scales Scrum and Agile practices. So that said, what would your guess be? Okay, so let me narrow these down. So okay. uh, you said there's no recommended size. There's always a recommended size. Come on. Um, the other one would be, you mentioned uh, 3 to 10 and 9 to 20. Yes. Um, typically, 9 to 20 just seems very, very large. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm going to lean to, for 3 to 10. Um, the other one was multiple twos for pair programming. I, I don't think that's it. So I'm going to go with 3 to 10. Well, you are correct. Great job. The answer is B. A typical scaled agile framework team size ranges from 3 to 10 members, basically to best promote high collaboration and smooth communication. And a scrum team is typically between 3 to 9 people. So you see how I was trying to help you out there. And... <laughs> So there, there was your hint. And safe, just for the benefit of our listeners out there, is basically just Godzilla Scrum. It takes the principles and workflows of Scrum and agile practices and blows it up to enterprise scale. And safe also has a Scrum master and product owner like Scrum, but some also some additional roles that the Scrum methodology does not feature. Well, thanks again for being my PM test subject today, George. Well, thanks for having me. Anytime. And thank you for joining me for this week's Cert Bite. If you're actively studying for this certification and have any questions about study tips or even future certification questions you'd like to see, please feel free to email me at certbyte at n2k.com. That's C-E-R-T-B-Y-T-E at n2k.com. If you'd like to learn more about N2K's practice tests, visit our website at n2k.com forward slash certify. For sources and citations for this question, please check out our show notes. Happy certifying. Don't forget, you can find out more about our practice tests on our website. And now, a word from our sponsor, Cortex. Security teams face a barrage of more. More security tools create more complexity. More devices need protection. More specialized focus areas create more silos. The security landscape is changing fast. How can security operations transform to meet current threats? Cortex by Palo Alto Networks consolidates SecOps tools into an integrated platform and helps organizations stop threats at scale with AI, automation, and analytics. Learn more at paloaltonetworks.com slash Cortex. What do Mattel, Banana Republic, ButcherBox, and Glossier all have in common? They power their businesses with Shopify. Shopify is the most innovative and scaled commerce platform on the planet that also happens to have the best converting checkout on the planet. And that's no industry secret. That's Shopify. Learn more at shopify.com slash enterprise. And finally, cyber criminals are capitalizing on the latest Sean Diddy Combs scandal by spreading a malware strain dubbed P. Diddy Sploit, targeting curious social media users, particularly on X Twitter. Lured by the promise of deleted Diddy posts, users are tricked into downloading files that infect their devices with this Trojan. P. Diddy Sploit, a variant of the Pi Cylon rat malware, allows attackers to steal sensitive data, record screen activity, and remotely control systems. As usual, cyber criminals know people just can't resist celebrity drama. 
So instead of satisfying their curiosity, these users end up with a digital mess on their hands. The scheme is reminiscent of past attacks, where hackers used everything from Oscar movie downloads to nude celebrity leaks as bait. The moral of the story? Think twice before clicking on files promising exclusive scandal content. You might get more than you bargained for. And that's the Cyberwire. For links to all of today's stories, check out our daily briefing at thecyberwire.com. We'd love to know what you think of this podcast. Your feedback ensures we deliver the insights that keep you a step ahead in the rapidly changing world of cybersecurity. If you like our show, please share a rating and review in your favorite podcast app. Please also fill out the survey in the show notes or send an email to cyberwire at n2k.com. We're privileged that N2K Cyberwire is part of the daily routine of the most influential leaders and operators in the public and private sector, from the Fortune 500 to many of the world's preeminent intelligence and law enforcement agencies. N2K makes it easy for companies to optimize your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your teams while making your team smarter. Learn how at n2k.com. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. Our mixer is Trey Hester, with original music and sound design by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producer is Jennifer Iben. Our executive editor is Brandon Carr. Simone Petrella is our president. Peter Kilpie is our publisher. And I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Tomorrow.